The FL Studio main panel holds some of the most essential controllers. Here you see the main menu as you know it from other programs. Underneath, you see the hint bar. If you hold the cursor on any control in the program, you'll see a description popping up. So you might want to keep an eye out for the hint bar, as it may turn out useful for you in the future. Above the main menu, we have the title bar. This shows you the title of the project you're working on. That is, if the project is saved and thereby has a title. To the right of the title bar you'll see three buttons. Minimize minimizes the main window. Maximize restore maximizes or restores the main window. And close shuts down FL Studio. If you haven't saved your project, you'll be asked to do so before the shutdown. To the right of the hint bar you can see the sync lid. This flashes orange in the beginning of each beat and yellow at the beginning of each bar. Underneath this, you'll see the MIDI activity LED. This lights up when FL Studio gets an external controller signal. Next to this is the master fader, the controller of the main volume, and next to that, the main pitch fader. With this, you decide the main pitch of the FL Studio generators. The transport panel holds the controls for playing, stopping, recording, the slider for song position and the tempo display. This display you can change by left clicking on the display and dragging either up or down. It's also here you switch between playing a single pattern or playing the whole arrangement. Above the transport panel is the time panel, showing the time frame of the song in different formats. By clicking on SB on the top you can switch between showing steps or beats. And in the bottom, you can click on BM and switch between bars or minutes. The output monitor panel is an oscilloscope display that shows the wave output and a peak meter display that shows the final output from FL Studio. If the peak meter turns red, the final output will be distorted. So try and avoid this. All the way to the right, you'll see an all new shortcuts menu. Here you can undo, save as, save as new version, export your project to an audio file, open the new Edison Wave Editor, start a new sound recording, see info about your project, and open the FL Studio Reference Manual. Now let's look at the recording panel. Activate this lamp to use your computer keyboard as a MIDI controller. Or if you want a metronome countdown before recording from a MIDI keyboard, activate this lamp. You can also activate this lamp to mix the recorded tones with already existing tones. Or activate this lamp to loop your pattern while you record. To turn off the metronome, activate this lamp. Or activate this lamp if you want FL Studio to wait with the recording until you push a key on your MIDI keyboard. Activate this lamp to turn step recording on or off. Or this last lamp if you want the time marker always to follow your playback. The last thing we'll look at now is the snap menu where you choose if your blocks in the piano roll and the playlist are to automatically snap to the nearest grid or one of the other displayed options in the menu. Now we're almost ready to get on with the fun part, making the music. But before we do that, it's important that FL Studio is set up correctly so we don't get any unnecessary interruptions while we're working. At first we're going to set up the sound card. We do that by going to the main menu Choose Options, Audio Settings. At the top we choose our output, that is the sound card we're going to play our sound on. If your sound card supports ACO drivers, you will want to choose that. Sound cards that support ACO drivers has a lower risk of delays, which means a lower latency risk. If your sound card doesn't support ACO, do not despair, there is help to be found. 
At www.acoforall.com, you can download a free ACO program that you simply install on your PC, whereafter it can be found in FL Studio in the output options under Audio Settings. You can of course choose not to use ACO, but you will get a more frequent occurrence of irregularities in the sound playback, especially if you have loaded many heavy plugins or long samples. If you choose not to use ACO but instead a direct sound device, I would recommend that you activate the hardware buffer in the direct sound properties. And if you still experience problems with the playback, you can always try to increase your buffer length. You do that on this slider. In this example we choose to use the ACO for all driver. Now the sound is set. Next up is plugging in a MIDI keyboard so we can record directly into the piano roll. Before you start plugging in anything, it's important that you shut down your computer, so you don't get into trouble. If you have a traditional MIDI keyboard with a MIDI plug, you'll need a MIDI cable and a MIDI connector on your PC. But many newer MIDI keyboards can be wired up with USB or Firewire. When you have plugged in your MIDI keyboard, you start up your computer and your keyboard and open FL Studio. Go to the main menu, Options, MIDI Settings. Now your MIDI controller should be on the list of inputs. Choose your controller and click Enable to enable it. Now you should have a signal through from your MIDI controller. If you try and push a key and the MIDI activity LED lights up, that means you'll have a signal through to FL Studio. Let's try it out. It's working!